because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm not only making him number one out of the three presidents to report to the king but he was having a grand plan to make him the head of the whole realm, head of presidents, head of princes. The king thought to set him over the whole realm. The Daniel generation. The Daniel generation. There are certain things we see in the life of Daniel. There are certain things we see in the life of Daniel. The life of Daniel is a life in totality that exposes several foundational truths. Every generation repeats history. Not because the generation is meant to repeat history. It is the people in the generation that replay history. Every generation replays itself. But people in that generation repeat history. Daniel's lifestyle tells us all Daniel went through tells us that condition don't determine destination. Conditions don't determine destination. Determination does. Your condition is not your conclusion. Your condition is not your conclusion. What you are going through doesn't determine where you are going to. Going through is an experience. Going to is a destination. The story of Daniel, that's lifestyle. Everything about Daniel, all he passed through, tells us that anything good must come under attack. Anything good. If the devil is not fighting you, it means he owns you. You don't fight your children. If the devil is not after you, it means he has already conquered you. You don't pursue what you have in your possession. Someone met a great man of God and said to him, Man of God, I want to thank God for my life that I've been a Christian for over 30 years and the devil has never come after me. And the man of God said, I'm sorry to disappoint you, you are not a Christian. Because if you are a Christian, the devil is going to come after you. Hell will break loose over you. Because the devil is not angry and excited that you have been snatched out of his hand by the redemptive power that is in the blood of Jesus. Am I communicating? Anything good. If you read Daniel chapter 1 and verse 3, you will discover the qualities of Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. The Bible said they were no there was no blemish in them. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 3 down. He says, you bring certain kind of the Jews, the king's seed. Go down. Just keep reading read it down. Keep going down. From verse 4. Go down. Children in whom, look at the qualities on these four Hebrew boys. Actually, there were five of them. Keep that scripture up. They were not four. There were initially five of them that were taken from captivity. Shadrach was taken. Meshach was taken. Abednego was taken. Daniel was taken. Ezekiel was also taken. Do you remember the story of how this unfolded? How it played out? The Bible says God has spoken to a man called Ezekiah and says, Ezekiah, you shall not surely die anymore. He gave him a prophecy. Initially, he was going to die and he turned his face to the wall. As he turned his face to the wall, God reversed the prophecy that God gave. Am I communicating? What God said, God reversed it. That is why I tell people, if a man could provoke God to reverse what God has said, then what the devil said is inconsequential. If what God said could be reversed, then what the devil said can be smashed and scattered. Am I communicating right now? And the Bible says he turned to the wall and he got healed because the prophecy was reversed. But because of that healing that he got. Several kings were coming to rejoice with him. One of the kings that came was a man called Merok Baladan. And when Merok Baladan came, he said, Ezekiah, I'm happy for what God has done for you. Ezekiah said, I'm happy too. And he took 
Merubaladan into his temple, showed him his gold, showed him his silver, showed him his wealth, showed him his prosperity, showed him everything you must be careful. Showed him everything that God has given to him. And the Bible says the man looked at it and registered some of the wealth in his mind and the man left as soon as the man left Isaiah walked in and Isaiah said what happened here who just left here he said Merubaladan came to the palace he said and what have you done did you show him anything he said yes I showed him the gold I showed him the silver I showed him the bronze he said what have you done a time is going to come that that man out of greed and avarice is going to come with everybody hear that in second kings 20 17 he said behold the days come that all that is in thy house and thy father's house have laid up his store to this day shall be carried to babylon in other words this man will come carry all the wealth that he saw into babylon in the process of carrying that the man carried daniel carried some people as slaves he carried some people so that they can be subject to bondage he carried daniel he carried shedra i'm trying to let you know how they got into babylon he carried shedra he carried abednego he carried daniel he carried ezekiel but as they were going on the way a man called Ezekiel rebelled he reacted and said Babylonian captivity is not my portion and he screamed when they got to a spot called Cheba he screamed and his heavens opened that is what he said in Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1 he said I was among the captives that was carried the river Cheba he said in that day the heavens opened and I saw visions of God now it came to pass in the third year and the fourth, fourth thirtieth year in the fourth month in the fifth day of the month as I was among the captives by the river Cheba, that the heavens were opened. I saw visions of God. When the heavens opened for him, they couldn't carry him further. They left him there. Am I communicating there? So they left him back and he stayed back and began to download the book of Ezekiel, the book of mysteries and revelation. Why others were going into captivity? One man sat down and was uncovering mystery. The difference we have is that while everybody is under a closed heaven some people have unlocked and opened their heavens as you hear the sound of my voice i make a declaration over your life and that of your family over your life and that of your family your heavens must open Amen. your heavens must open your heavens must open your heavens must open take your seat The life, so that's how they got into captivity. The life of Daniel tells us anything good must be found. Look at what he says in Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Look at the qualities. So you are telling me, apostle, why am I going through what I'm going through? You are going through this battle because you are too special. Satan is jealous of you. Satan is jealous of you. Only you, all these qualities by God. No, look at that. Look at the people that were taken to captivity. Children in whom was no blemish well favored skillful in all wisdom coming in knowledge understanding science they were science students such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace oh my god you are going through what you are going through because there is something special about you hell is envious hell is jealous what is man that thou art mindful of him what is the son of man that thou visitest him thou hast made him a little lower than the angels am i communicating there is something special about your life the devil is envious of the grace that god has put upon you the devil is envious of the grace that is upon your life that is why they are fighting you back and forth but the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous by the Lord delivered him out of them all so no matter the battles that you're fighting no matter the battles that come your way I see deliverance coming for you the hand of God will preserve you the hand of God will fight your battle the hand of God will sustain you somebody shout fire 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 have you heard people say when they go through battles they say why me have you heard it if you ever said that word, you are a wicked person. If you say, why me? You actually say it should be somebody else. You actually say, I shouldn't be the one going through this. It should have been someone else. Why me? How many of you have discovered that nobody gets prosperity and say, why me? 
You just bought a car. Why me? There's so much God has done for you. <laughs> Why me? No. You are celebrating. You are happy about it. So the life of Daniel tells us many truths before I begin to expose and explain a few things about Babylon. The life of Daniel tells us that climate bows to courage. Climate, climate, climate bows to courage. What you carry is of more value than where you are located. Cli car climate bows to courage. Surrounding surrenders to anointing. Climate bows to courage. Surroundings surrenders to anointing. Ambience bows to audience. Your audience with God is what puts your ambience in check. You can, you can be domiciled in the place where wickedness exists and you put them in your pocket. In Psalm 31, 21, he said, Thou hast shown me kindness in a strong city. A place where others are swallowed up. I live as if the devil does not exist. Sending the devil on transfer. Rusticating Satan from my location. Am I communicating? I, that generation shows us a lot of things. And, and it's a generation that we ought to study. Babylon was the worst place to live and excel. It was the worst. Babylon was a location that was practically impossible to be in Babylon, even as a Babylonian, and do well. Not a talk of coming in as a stranger, not a stranger, but as a slave. Can I say this to you? Strangers are of more value than slaves. But somebody entered Babylon conquered Babylon conquered the politicians Daniel was relevant in four governments when that when, when Belshazzar was king Daniel was relevant when Ahusheros was king Daniel was relevant when Nebuchadnezzar was king Daniel was relevant when Darius was king Daniel was relevant Daniel was an example of a current Nigerian politician Ajib Ajib any government in power relevant to four four tenures and four governments the governments in scripture are not government with four year tenure they are kings till death so Daniel was with one king till he died the son picked him up and said you can't go fast stay close till that one died the third came till he died the fourth came till he died Daniel was relevant Being relevant, being valuable, being treasured, being desired for the rest of your life is a permanent reality if you discover mysteries. Nobody should tell you it's your time. Have you had such statement? When somebody is doing what they say, it's your time. It's just your time. It can be your time for life. When I started ministering the word of God, going from one nation to another, people said it's your time. Over 20 something years ago. It's your time. It's just your time. It's grace. It's your time. It's your time. 20 something years later. You see your time. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. It becomes your time for life. When you practice the same truth. Because all truth is reality. When your life is in sync. It's in order. It's in line. With the plan and purpose. Of divine agenda. Look at the life of Daniel. Babylon. There were several vices in Babylon that with those vices you can't do it. Number one, Babylon was the center of witchcraft. Babylon was the center of witchcraft. You are talking about witchcraft, Babylon. Babylon, that was why Jezebel is always connected to Babylon. Babylon was a place that can use a golden calf. Turn it to a god. Babylon, I want you to know something, child of God. We are in a generation now, in this end time, one of the most prevalent factors and prevalent challenges is witchcraft. Why do young men die? Witchcraft. Why do people get married they can't do well? Witchcraft. 
Why do talented people not prosper? Witchcraft. Why do people, why even pastors and ministers and businessmen, why don't they understand their life? Witchcraft. Why would somebody travel out of Nigeria and go to Europe, go to America, go to Asia, 10 years, 15 years, come back without anything to show? Witchcraft. It doesn't matter how you try to explain. We used to think that witches are those who go and fly to a tree at the night. That is what they tell you. That witches are those who go and fly at the night and they go to one Iroko tree. Those ones are baby witch. They are baby witch. Those who wait till night to fly, they are baby witch. Real witches fly in the daytime. They don't wait to fly at night. Those are baby witches that go to a tree. They start set on a tree. Those are village witches. Village, village. Very illiterate witchcraft. I'm talking of wickedness that a man can sit down in the office and be throwing arrows. A man can sit in an executive chair and be throwing weapons. Anytime you see herbalist or you see wickedness or you see charm to witchcraft. Babylon was a place of witchcraft. I know women who somebody can look into their stomach and remove their pregnancy. That is witchcraft. I know people today, somebody can come to their wedding and just stand in their wedding, make declarations and after one week, the marriage scatters. That is witchcraft. We are in a generation like Babylon was a generation of witchcraft. A woman and a man followed their beautiful daughter of 18 to America, dropped her in school, dropped the girl in school, and we are happy. There are two children, one was a boy, he was about 15, the other was about 18, took that one to school, and we are happy. Thank God. We have gotten to a level in training this child, and they came back. Two weeks later, the school called them that they should come back and carry the girl. From her waist down, was not working. From my shoulder down was gone. They carried their daughter, their child, to the airport two weeks ago. Went back three weeks later to carry her back on the stretcher. Laid on the stretcher. Inability to even turn. Now, doctors have said, take out. There's nothing wrong with her. We don't see, we can't see anything. But she just cannot stand or walk. Am I communicating here? Couldn't move at all. And they called on phone. And they kept calling and calling and calling. And the man sent a word. He said, this is the only hope I have. Please, just a reply. And the Lord said, call them. And I called them. And they narrated the story to me. After narrating the story, I asked the man, when your daughter got admission, who did you call? He called whom? I said, and they, they asked you, when is she going? He said, yes. They asked you the exact time she is going. He said, yes. And they told you to call on your way taking her to the airport. He said, yes. I said, you are a fool. Who are you to find? Who are you to want to know the details of my children? Have you noticed in many villages when the child is doing well, they say, Our son. When you were paying school fees, your son. When you were paying school fees, he was your son. When you were training him in school, he was your son. There is somebody I banned from my house until eternity is bound. The mistake he made was to call my wife our wife. I said, what did you say? My wife didn't even know. My wife just greeted and entered. And I turned to him. I said, what did you call my wife now? He said, no, our wife. I said, turn back. L leave our house. <laughs> my wife, our wife? Since when? How? Did we, did we pay dowry together? How? Did we pay dowry? Do you know what I, I went through to marry my wife? Where money, you don't understand this. I'm going to get to that. Where money, fin, man of God, I use both physical and spiritual to marry my wife. Both physical and spiritual to marry my wife. I paid, they bill me from money, money finish. I went there with money, I thought I was loaded, rich, empowered, financially standing. When I got there, money finish. Everything I carried finished. I've told you severally that when you just when you just start seeing money, you think everybody is poor. When you just start seeing money, you are standing, say, "Man, I gather." You think everybody is poor, not knowing that if you are just waking up, don't forget some people have not slept. I said to my wife, "I said I'm going there heavy." When I got the money finished, 
and I was looking at them. They said, bring for the, the, the family, the uncles, the nephews, the relatives. And my sister-in-law was by me. I said, what do I do? He said, I don't know. I switched into a prophecy. The man that was collecting money, I told him that he has a son that is deaf. He said, it's true. I said, go and bring him. My sister-in-law became my interpreter. That was how I married her. I married by gift. Money finish. Then you now call that woman our wife. How? Now that is how it starts. That's how it begins. Our son. Our daughter. Our, our, our family. Now I'm, I'm laughing at some of you that think that these things we are talking about, we are just joking. That is why if you are an serious person, you are very unserious and you are here for one year, look for another church because you are going to have problems. And they, he opened his mouth and narrated himself and they brought the girl on stretcher. 18 year old, what has she done? If you have issues with the father, face the father. Witchcraft is real. Now I am speaking this and I know in the coven they are hearing me now. I know in the witchcraft coven they are hearing my voice now. I know in the covens of hell, witchcraft they can hear me. And I make a declaration over you. Everyone that hear the sound of my voice. Anyone that is a witch or a wizard or wickedness that is after your life. Today they aspire. Today they aspire. Today they aspire. If Daniel could succeed in Babylon, Daniel could thrive in Babylon. If Babylon is a city of wickedness, Daniel could prosper. Daniel could thrive. I make a decree. I don't know your family background. I don't know the family you come from. In that wicked family, I see you accelerate. I see you accelerate. If your amen is louder, you are the one I just spoke to. Take your seat. Kalabashata. Wickedness. 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 Kobaradaba. Yekete kete kete kete. Brokoso prokoto brakatas. Lete kete kete. There are some testimonies I will take, I will just take caution. Because there are things if I share some of them with you, you will just run out of this hall. To see the reality of wickedness. That's why I say in Micah chapter 5 verse 12, God says he will cut off wickedness. Exodus 22, 18, suffer not a witch to live. Galatians 3, 1 says, who has bewitched you, O foolish Galatians? There are people who have been bewitched. That scripture practically means that when you are bewitched, you start behaving like a fool. A bewitched person, you see a person who is bewitched in the midst of opportunities, he soils it with his hand. Am I communicating now? Who have bewitched you? Oh, foolish Galatians. Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? I'm talking of wickedness. 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 Babylon was a city of witchcraft. Babylon was a place of captivity. Imprisonment. Captivity in scripture is limitation, restrictions. Babylon was a city where everyone from Israel was in captivity. It was a process of affliction. Gradual extinction. If you are in this ministry... You worship here as a member or you are a distant member. You are a visiting member. We have visiting members who come every month, attend that program, and whatever you are. The highest form of liberation is spiritual liberation. You can have money and still be in prison. You can have so much connection and still be in prison. You can have so much contact and influence. The greatest form of liberation is spiritual liberation. 
when you are liberated spiritually, you are liberated mentally, you are liberated in your spirit life, you are liberated in your prayer life, you are liberated in your dream life. I saw a, a young man, young. I said, when I saw him then, all his hair had turned gray. All his hair had turned gray. I saw him then, and quiet, 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 please, quiet. I saw him then, focus here, please. And all his hair had turned gray. So I looked at him, I said, you are, you are aging, you are, you are looking old. He was less than 50. And I said, you are looking old. Don't get me wrong, there are people, it's, it's, an, it's a gene, okay? Going gray is genetic, it's, it's genetic in their family and all of that. I'm just saying, his was induced. All right? So I asked him, I said, what's going on? He said, I do vigil every night. And the Lord said, don't think he's spiritual, he's doing vigil out of fear. And the young man told me he can't sleep. I said, why? He said, if he sleeps in the bed, he sees himself in the car. He wake up in the car. He goes to the bed to sleep again. He sleeps in the bedroom and he sees himself in the restroom. Demons just, they, they embarrass him. They will carry him from bed. No, no, no. <laughs> just to let you know, don't assume we are oppressing you. We want you to know that we are really around. Carry him from there, drop him in the car. Locked car locked locked he'll be inside he has to open it he'll come down so when he's going to bed he doesn't know where he will find himself in the morning so he just stays awake and prays and pray he couldn't sleep with all the wealth all the money he had affliction limitation restriction babylon was a city of worldliness and materialism you are looking for the latest design is babylon to stay in that kind of city and be focused. Can I say this to you? Nothing destroys people. Environment doesn't spoil people. Friends don't spoil people. People are spoiled because they want to be spoiled. Are you following me? been around the world okay i can tell you i've seen all kinds of things and all kinds of people people become useless because they want to be useless there's nothing like oh my friends pressure me to drinking my friend nobody pressured you you are drinking because you are a drunkard you are drinking because you gave yourself nobody pressures anybody no situation pressures people have you have you seen people went to drugs you ask them why they said they were depressed Eh? Are you the first to be depressed? Many have been depressed and they came out of it. To be depressed and take drugs is to move from depression to addiction. That's stupid. Worldliness. Now, when I say worldliness, worldliness is not necessarily sin. Worldliness is anything that reduces your love for God. 1 Corinthians 10, 23 says, All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hmm. All right, look at this. Look here. What are you writing that you have not finished writing? Look here. Look here. How many of you know? How many of you know? No, look here. Just listen. How many of you know the, test, the temptation of Jesus? Two out of the three was not actually seen. They were not actually sins. Turn stone to bread. Is that a sin? It's a miracle. They did he not turn water to wine? So turning things is not a problem. No, you are not following what I'm saying. So if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Is it a sin? To turn stone to bread, is it a sin? Wait now, wait. It's not as though, but Bible, the Bible never said all the stones in the world are counted. Did there anyone become bread? There'll be a problem. He never said God counted all the stones on earth. No one shall become bread. There's no temptation like that. No commandment like that. So it was not breaking the law. How many of you know if Jesus had carried one stone and turned that stone to bread? Sit down. And turned that stone to bread. Among the community of stones, that stone will not be missing. Because you cannot, can you count how many stones we have in this world? Okay, so picking one and turning one to bread, is it a sin? It's not. But it's not necessary. There's no need for it. Anointing moves where there is need. 
He turned water to wine because there was need. Are you following what I'm talking about? There are some things you don't do, not because they are not sin, but because it's not necessary. For the believer to do worldliness, display. That's the generation we are living in. Where Christians are struggling with unbelievers on who should display, who should show. That's the generation we are in. <laughs> 